Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another preview for you guys today. First off, Happy New Year. I hope you guys have had some good celebrations. Socially distant celebrations, but good celebrations still. We can still enjoy ourselves by ourselves or doing Zoom calls or whatever you want to do. I don't want to waffle too much, but it is a new year. Let's hope for a new Chelsea because 2020 has low-key stinked as a Chelsea fan and it was definitely a terrible end to the year. But let's look forwards. Let's not look backwards. Let's try and look forwards and try and have a good year because 2020 in football outside football whatever way you want to look at it, it was just a giant l for everybody involved and let's just hope that 2021 is different but it is a baptism of fire to start things off as chelsea versus manchester city we're going to delve deeper into this later on in the video but if you guys haven't done so already hit the like button press the subscribe button hit the bell notification button as well and please start my 2021 off right we are getting very very close to 20k Recent results have probably been a big result for it as well because I've been absolutely memed since the Arsenal game. But if you guys haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It will be the best thing possible for me and I would massively appreciate it. And without further ado, let's go straight into the Chelsea Manchester City preview. It's a new year, but the tests have just continued to get harder and harder. And Chelsea welcome Manchester City to Stamford Bridge for the first game of the new year. And what a big clash to start off. If you're a neutral fan, you must be gassed for the game on Sunday. If you're a Chelsea fan or hell, maybe even a Manchester City fan based on uh, what's been going on around the club this week, you're probably not looking forward to this match. And Chelsea, yeah, we definitely aren't looking forward to this match. We look completely different to the team that started in December. We went into the month unbeaten in 11, in 11 games in all competitions. We were riding high. Everyone was gassed. We were saying title contenders. We could go for the title. Super Frankie Lampard's Chelsea are going everywhere. And December just came and just smacked the shit out of us all month. There's been games like the Everton match where I'm not really too mad about on the grand scheme of things. If you have no wingers and you lose to one penalty, it is what it is. I don't care too much, especially with the other games that came up, which really was our fault. Where poor game management, in some cases poor rotation... Or in some cases, just an absolute collapse, just destroyed our confidence, destroyed our form. And now we've left December with one win in our last five. And even that one win against West Ham was a bit of a false image if you really look deeply into the game. We didn't really dominate that game. West Ham gave us a big fight for large periods. And then Tammy Abraham just popped up with two goals at the end to really clear a gap between Chelsea and West Ham. But it wasn't anything to show for it. We had the Wolves defeat, which was just awful, awful game management in my opinion. We should have just sharp shop at 1-0 down, but we didn't do it. The substitutions didn't help either. Also, the same thing where we substitute players after the 70th minute. It was the same issues, and we saw that same issues against Aston Villa as well. I thought rotation was terrible for that game. Granted, we did rotate six players, and I'm fine with that. It's about the players that we rotated where I think the problems were. If you especially look at the midfield, you had the two midfielders at Kante and Mason Mount that started the majority of the game against Arsenal two days before that where also we absolutely collapsed in that game I don't even want to delve too deep into it because I'm really really just trying to get that game off my head but absolute collapse from top to bottom I thought the tactics were terrible and also Frank Lampard as well starting uh, Reese James and Ben Chilwell who were clearly not fit to start that game it, it was suicide from us it, it was absolutely poor but the last few games haven't been good for us it hasn't been great for us but at the very least it hasn't been that great for anybody else either if it was this time last season we would probably be about 15 20 points off the top off the top of the table right now right now we are about seven points off if we win our next game against Manchester City we're four points off top so on the grand scheme of things we're still keeping we're still keeping on track with everybody else statistically though we are doing worse than we did last season which is why Frank Lampard's coming under a lot of criticism as well because in my opinion we were looking at this season from a points total. We wanted to be involved in the title race. I said that from the start and I stand by it. And to an extent, we're still doing that as well. But points total would dictate the dominance that you've had in a season. Whether you finish top, whether you finish bottom, whether you want to compare that to this season to last season, it's about your points tally in my opinion. And me and Ian said this on plenty lives uh, pre-season when we were doing pre-season previews and everything. But it was about points tally that would define dominance for us. And we had 66 points last season, which was the lowest points tally for a top four finish in Premier League history and this season it probably looks like it's going to be the exact same thing if not even worse 
but we're also not doing any better than we were doing last season in fact we're doing worse and we spent 200 million plus that can't run and that's why frank lampard's getting criticism but at the very least everyone else is slipping around us as well that means there's still ground to catch up on that means we haven't fallen too far off the pack but it also means that we've missed a lot of opportunities fact is if we beat arsenal if we beat aston villa we would have been a point of liverpool at the top of the table right now everyone would be screaming frank lampard's praises you'd be saying we are deep into the title race race with manchester united and liverpool right now united who by the way i don't see as near the title race if your fans don't even rate your manager there's no way your team's in the title race they'll fall apart eventually but we ain't going to talk about manchester united we're going to talk about chelsea and we're still around this title race. We just need to get some consistency. And that's been the biggest issue for us. Spe no, not the biggest issue for us. But over the last month, it's been awful for us. Our form has completely turned on its head. But a couple wins can turn that around. Which is why it's not a crisis season. We're not in a terrible state right now. But if we continue, we continue to drop points, we could be. We're six points off one of the worst Arsenal sides in the, in the last 50 years right now. But on the other hand, we're also seven points off the top of the table. Four points if we get a win against Manchester City. So it looks terrible. It looks good. It really depends if you're optimistic. It really depends if you're pessimistic. It depends on your thoughts for the season. Also depends if you're even supporting us or not. If you're Or if you're just a rival fan. But there's two ways to look at this. Which is why Frank Lampard's under pressure. He's not under too much pressure. But if he continues to drop more points, we're going to be under a lot more pressure. And the, the January fixture list isn't really that favourable to us either. It's not as bad as the December one was. There's also healthy breaks in between a lot of the games as well. But we still have to go to Fulham, who are not as easy as you lot think. We've got Tottenham at the end of the month. We have the game against Manchester City tomorrow, like we just said. And we've got Wolves at home as well. Probably another team or two that I'm missing as well. But there's an FA Cup game that nobody cares about. We should be smashing Morecambe. But January is still going to be a tricky month for us. If we can get a run of wins there, that is a lot of tough teams that we have got past. Wolves and Tottenham, we don't have to worry about them anymore because we know Tottenham just screams nil-nil. But we need to start building our form. And Manchester City, I'd say, does it provide the right time for it? I'm not too sure because Manchester City's form has been excellent going into this game. They've won they've won their last six leagues league games i think or they're unbeaten in their last six their form is much better than us going into this game they shored up their defense they have the best defense in the premier league right now but i think they've also struggled against the top six teams the same way that we have it's not to the extent that we have where we can't haven't even beaten a team above us yet but they haven't got they haven't got w's in all of their games either so i'm looking at this game it all, it all depends on who wins the midfield battle for us. And it is much easier said than done when you're talking about Manchester City and their midfield and their system. Because they have a set system and they have a set team. Their issue has been up front, which is also very surprising to say considering Man City. So it is just going to be a game of who's more clinical, Chelsea or Manchester City. Which team turns up, which team wins the midfield battle in my eyes, and which team takes their chances when it comes. On God, Lampard, do not put Timo Werner on the left-hand side. I will lose my head. I love you, man. As a legend, as a man, I love you. But the more you keep playing Werner on the left-hand side, the more I don't rate it. But in fact, the more I say it... Timo Werner on the left only really works when he has space. And if Manchester City are open, he might have space. Which, again, I'm, I'm trying to look at things from both sides of the table here. So if I sound like I'm waffling, I'm sorry. But I am trying to look at things from a positive point of view. I'm trying to look at things from a more pessimistic point of view as well. Because we can't be too overly positive. But we could also get a result against Manchester City. I mean, crazier results have happened. I mean, Liverpool lost 7-2 to Aston Villa. Leicester City are third in the table and they've lost five games this season, which is absolutely mad. And we lost 3-1 to that Arsenal side. I mean, crazy results have happened. So we could easily go and get a result against Manchester City. But who knows? So we're going to go through the team news very quickly before I end this video. Before I end this video, Hakim Ziyech is back in training, but he may or may not be risked for this game. I'd be surprised to see him start. I wouldn't be against seeing him start too, but I'd be surprised to see him start. So I don't think he'll start this game. Reese James is definitely still out though. The hamstring problem he picked up in the Arsenal game. Why he started that game, I'll never know. But other than that, there's no injuries for us. Manchester City, you've got Edison, Jesus, Walker all self-isolating. As well as two other players that haven't been identified yet. So we're going to have to find that one out tomorrow. 
Moving on into my starting lineup before I end this, I'm going to start with the same back five as you would predict, except Reese James comes out for Cesar Espelicueta with his injury. So that's Edward Mendy, Ben Chilwell on the left, Silva and Zuma returning back to the starting lineup, and Cesar Espelicueta making his 400th start for Chelsea. Uh, in midfield, who would I go for in midfield? Here's the thing I didn't really rate N'Golo Kante against Manchester City last season, so. I wouldn't go for Jorginho in this game either because I said he'd be better against a pressing team. He's been absolutely poor this season. Um, agree or disagree with me if you want, but I would go for Billy Gilmore in this game. I think he's the best passer that we have in the team. Maybe second to Hakim Ziyech, but I think his range of passing is just absolutely ridiculous. I think he also has the composure and the aggression. He can read the game perfectly and he knows how to time his tackles. He is miles better than Jorginho, in my opinion. I wouldn't be against Billy Gilmore starting this game. Agree or disagree me if you're not, Billy Gilmore's going into the starting lineup. Um, Kante will go in there, but I want to have him as the box to box midfielder for this game next to Mason Mount. And we're going to go for Christian Pulisic on the left. Christian Pulisic and Timo Werner on the right, because Werner's fine on the right. I don't have too much issues with him there. Up front. Um, Olivier Drood, if we're spamming crosses, which we're eventually going to end up doing, you just know us. Olivier Drood is starting. I'm sick to death of seeing Tammy in the air. I'm not having none of that anymore. Olivier Drood has to start. Score prediction, I'm going to go for a 1-0 Chelsea because I'm optimistic and I'm always going to back my team. But it could easily be 1-1 as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw in this game. But guys, this is the end of the match preview. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care and up the shells.